Everybody's here? Everybody doing all right? Good, good. Let's, uh, let's ask the Lord's blessing on this because I'm going to need his help. Lord, we thank you for letting us be in your house this morning, oh God. We thank you for your watch care over us this far through this day. Pray that you watch over us, lead us, and guide us. Lord, help this message to go out as you would have it to, oh God. Open our hearts and our minds and our ears that we can hear what you want us to hear. That we can take it and receive it. That I can, that I can speak the words that you want people to hear, dear God. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Well, we're going to read the lesson text. It's Matthew 6, 25 through 33. I guess if I'm going to see it, I better use my helpers here. I'll try to get the light right. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought of your life, what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon, in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall be not much more clothe you, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith. That's so off right there, O ye of little faith. Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Brother Bauer, would you read the focus verse? But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. All these things. Y'all have to seek. I'm going to go ahead and read the lesson connection because it's, it's kind of interesting. A young woman sat weeping as she rocked in her chair near the roaring fire of the fireplace. A concerned family member was alarmed at her emotional distress and questioned her as to what was troubling her. <clears throat> the woman explained, I was just sitting here thinking about what if I were married and had a baby. Yes, go on, followed the concerned loved one. There's certainly no reason to cry about that. The weeping woman continued, but what if I were sitting here rocking my baby near the fireplace and lost my grip and my baby fell into the roaring fire of that fireplace? She continued to cry. That would be terrible. What a terrible thought. Yes, the woman continued, I cannot bear to think about it, yet it is all I can think about. She broke out into uncontrollable sobs once again. But dear, the loved one explained, exclaimed, you have no child. You are not married. You are not engaged to be married. Why are you not, you are not even dating anyone right now. Why would you be so troubled over such a thought? I don't know. I just can't help myself. The young woman continued to cry. Something in the human psyche causes people to struggle with fear, anxiety, or worry. Some people deal with extreme concern that their clothes might not be impeccable or their house might not be perfect for company. All the while, their clothes are fine and they're not even expecting visitors to their home. Too often, we allow concerns and worries to trouble us when there is no cause to worry. Is it possible that some people's worry stems from their failure to arrange their lives in proper order with biblical priorities? In this lesson, we will consider what should be the top priority in our lives as believers? It might not prevent all concerns and worries in life, but it certainly 
can help us live without undue emotional stress as we pursue the kingdom of God above all pursuits. We worry about a lot of things, don't we? We're people. We're humans. Just kind of part of our human nature. The dictionary defines fear as anxiety over real or possible danger, pain, etc. Worry is defined as mental distress or agitation resulting from anxiety, an instance or occurrence of such distress or agitation. Anxiety is defined as worry or uneasiness about what may happen. Fear and worry seem to stem from anxiety. Well, we worry about things that's not even going to happen. Too many times. Too many times. Well, it might happen. Yeah, it might. But why worry about it till it does? I mean, you're just... You're, I read something the other day, and I can't remember exactly how it goes, but when you worry, you're destroying this part of your day. You're, 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 you can have a good day, but you're destroying that because you're worried about what might happen. Life has a way of putting mental distress and agitation in front of us. We cannot totally eliminate these problems or sources of worry, but we can decide how we're gonna handle them. Uh, I asked a lady the other day, I said, well, how's your day been? A little afternoon. She said, it's been real good. I said, well, that's great. She said something about, well, it's subject to change or something other. And I said, you know what? If we're having a good day and then somebody comes along and they say something that's going to ruin your good day, we don't have to let them. We don't have to let that bother us. Yeah, they're trying to, but we don't have to let it. It's, it's what we do with it that makes the difference. We can put in our minds that there is nothing I can do about this. You hear people say it all the time. I just worry about this all the time. There's nothing I can do. I've probably been guilty of saying it. But yes, there is. There is something we can do. Certain situations, the situation itself, we cannot do about it. Some things. But... The worry, we can do something about that. We don't have to sit there and dwell on it. We don't have to think about it. Because if we do, our fears are controlling us. We're not controlling them. And we're supposed to be able to control all things. If we decide that we're going, not going to control if we decide that they are not going to control us, we have to be tough and attack the situation and the problem and change the way we do things. If you don't change anything, nothing's going to be different. It's going to stay the same. It's always better if we don't do this by ourselves we need to call on God to help us and lead us. We pray and ask him for help, and he will help us overcome. He will build us up. He will strengthen us. But we have to turn it over to God and leave it in his hands. We can't turn it over to God and then go, I'm still worried about this. And we do it. We're humans. We do it all the time. I gave it to God. Fifteen minutes later, oh, I'm still worried about that. You didn't completely give it to God. You didn't leave it there. And we try to do things our way and mess it up or nothing's happening. Then we go to God. We should go to God first. But we don't. We can handle things. My wife's a fixer. She tries to make sure everybody's 
in sync, happy. I'm a worker, you know, I ain't got time for that. I try to do right, but you know, sometimes I say, well, let them do what they're gonna do. Our everyday life can bring a lot of worries and stress into our life. Have you ever noticed that? When you're feeling good, here comes something trying to run it. So often we say, oh, the devil's at work. Well, sometimes it's just life. I mean, life happens even if the devil's there or not. Now, he's going to take advantage of any situation that we put ourselves in. He will use it. He'll work on you. He's real good at that. He's had a lot of experience. He will con he will create more confusion and more worry than what you really have to go through. Too many times people will say, well, that's how I was raised. Well, that's the way my parents did it. I didn't have a daddy or I didn't have a mama. Well, that's true. And it, it puts you in hard situations. But it's true when you're a child that there's not a lot you can do because you're under the influence, influence of your parents, if you have parents or a parent, an adult anyway. And there, you know, you're limited to what, as a child, you can do. But even as a child, most of us have at one time or another had a good influence on our lives. Some people haven't, and I understand that. And if you haven't, that's, that's okay because, but God allows us, even as children, to feel right and wrong for the most part. You know if something's right or you know if something's wrong, you may not be able to do anything about it because you are a child. But you can, you just, you feel it. Feel it in you. And I know there's, I know a couple hard-nosed boys that, they was raised hard, their parents was raised hard, and I don't know if they feel something or not, but surely they do once in a while. Well, that said, some things can create an impact on your life and even personality like I was getting at. You have to take control. Once you're an adult, you are an adult. You're not in the same situation you was as a child. It's up to you. You can control and you have to learn how to handle your fears yeah. and overcome those fears. Like I said, when you're a child, you don't have a lot of control. Once you get to be an adult, you've got to get your mind set different. You, uh, my Bible says something about when you were a child, you thought childish yeah. thoughts or I can't remember that quote. But there you go. But when you're an adult, you're supposed to have adult. You're, you take control of your life. It's hard to. You, uh, if you stop and think, you don't have to really worry about a lot of the things that you did or influenced you as a child because you're no longer that child. You've, you've grown out of that situation. So you just really don't have to go back there. I understand that some of these things are so ingrained, you know, and they carry over and they shape part of your adulthood. But the main thing is, you have to turn these things over to God. If you've got God in your life, if you've got a godly influence in your life, you have to turn them over to God. And you know what? God will help you. These people in this church, Godly people will help you in any way they can. They've helped us a lot. And like I said before, once you turn it over to God, you've got to leave it there. You can't go back. You can't go back. And the old devil will try to get you back. He will work hard to get you back because he don't want you bettering yourself. He's, his main thing is to tear us down. 
and keep us there. We have to keep reminding ourselves, I don't have to worry about this. God's got it. There's no one cookie cutter answer to how to handle stress and worries. We're all individuals. We all have our own personalities and God will deal with us on an individual basis. Yeah. He doesn't say, okay, they're UPC, we got to do this. They're this, we got to do this. No. He says, there's Kathy, there's Josh, there's Julie, there's Lori. Okay, let's lump all that. They've all got problems. Let's just lump them together. You can't. We've all got different problems. God will deal with these things differently. But then, I'm sorry, I think I've missed something here. Okay. Once we turn these over to God, I did miss this just a little bit. Like I said, we can't bring them back up. And when the devil brings them back up to us, we have to say, ah, no, 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 sorry. I don't have that problem. I gave it to God. You go talk to him. Right. Yeah. Devil ain't going to go talk to God about your problem. He knows God's got it. You hear the word proactive. This is what we need to be. The best way to stay ahead of a situation is by praying about everything. As 1 Thessalonians 5.17 states, Pray without ceasing. That's not going around. Oh, God, even on your job, Lord, no. You can pray, and you still can do your job. That doesn't mean 24-7, but it means you better pray often. And especially if you've got problems, you've got to pray often. You get the help. If we have a good prayer life, I feel like that we can stay ahead of a lot of these situations that yeah. we get into. Because we've already prayed about it. Not necessarily, oh, I'm going to be in trouble over here, or this is going to happen. But we've prayed about it. We've got a good life, a good prayer life. We've got a good connection with God. He's going to watch over us, and he's going to take care of a lot of these things that probably we never even know about. Right. Well, actually, he's going to do that, and we don't know about a lot of things that he does for us. We may find out later. We may never find out until glory comes. We cannot let stress and worries control our life. You can't do it. You'll kill yourself. Anybody that sits around and worries constantly has no life. You really don't. You're sad. You're depressed. You just, you're down in the muddy grubs. I haven't heard that in a while. But, <laughs> but you are. You, you just can't, you can't seem to rise above it. But if you can ever get yourself to the point where you turn it over to God, then okay. You're going to be all right. We read it in uh, verse 33, the focus verse. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things shall be added to you. We need to seek God first about everything. About everything. When we get up in the morning, Lord, I want to do your will this day. Have your way in my life. Help other people see you in me today. And, you know, and, and you can expand that to everything that you do. Lord, i got to pay this bill. Okay. Help me manage my money. Help me manage my time. Yeah. Yeah. We just, we get up. We're a human. We get up. And sometimes we pray and sometimes we don't. Sometimes we pray later in the day. But, you know, if 
if we just put it to God and ask him to help us through this day, he's going to. And like I said before, we may never know exactly what he keeps us from. You may be running 15 minutes late. There may be a car wreck down the road that that 15 minutes kept you out of. We don't know, but God's going to help us. We've got to turn it over to him. We've got to seek him first. We can't worry about, oh, man, if I start that car and I drive on the highway, I'm going to have a wreck. Or somebody's going to crash into me, whatever, whatever. We can't worry about that. I mean, it's life. God can take the worry, the stress, the intensity of that worry and stress away. Yep, things are going to happen. Yeah, I scraped that car. Okay, you wasn't paying attention. It's not God. You wasn't paying attention. God will provide our needs if we seek him first. I can't tell you how many times he has provided for us, as a, us as a family. Provided money. He's provided different ways of doing things. Uh, he's provided vehicles. I just, uh, you know, we wasn't in church one time, and I've told this story. Y'all probably get tired of it. God laid it on my heart. I mean, we were not in church, but God laid it on my heart to tithe somewhere. Oh, yeah, I was drinking and carrying on. But yet God laid that on my heart. I got a hold of Brother Deal over here at Dewar, who was the presbyter. And I said, well, I think he was more than that. Uh, anyway, I said, Brother Deal, Lord wants me to tithe somewhere. And I don't want to be mean, but I don't want to give it to your church because you've got money. I want to help somebody. He said, okay, I'll find you somebody. Within a week, he had me a little home mission church over in Tel or Stillwater, Stillwell. And uh, I started tithing that man over there. And I went by, he, he called me one day and he said, well, I wish you'd come by here and let me show you what your money done. And I said, brother, I haven't given you that much. But I, I had business over there, so I stopped. And he took me all day. It was renovating an old house. It was still in sad shape. But that little bit that we were able to give him, help him sheetrock it and do a few little different things. I'm sorry. It just it, it touched me. It really, really made me glad that I had listened to God. <clears throat> you know, your kids, as a parent, you, you pretty much know what your kids need. Not what they want, but what they need. And uh, you, they may be over there fiddling with something and struggling. And they need some help. But you sit there and watch them. See how far they're going to get. Then they come. Daddy, Mama, can you help me do this? Yeah, and you show them how. You don't necessarily do it for them, but you show them how. And you, know, you, you teach them how. God's that way with us. He's watching us. He's just waiting for us to come and say, God, I need your help. I can't do this. I can't do it on my own. I've got to have you help me. But you know what else? When we ask for that help, we've got to stop. We've got to listen. Because if we're talking, doing all the talking, how are we going to hear him talk? He's not going to say, hey, stop talking and listen to me. 
parents sometimes would do that. But, you know, God's not going to do that. He's a gentleman. Been said time after time. He's going to wait on us. And when we shut up, then he's going to answer us. And it, it, it's really sad that some people go all through their life not knowing God or what his will for their life is. And that, that's bad. And getting back to this uh, listening part, we have two ears and one mouth for a reason. We got both ears, even some of us have hearing aids, but we hear. We have to listen. And, and this holds true out in the world. If you go somewhere and if you just stop talking and listen to other people talk, you'll learn a lot of things. But the major thing is you've got to stop talking and listen to God. You've got to hear what he's saying. Speak less and listen more applies everywhere. Worry and stress. We need to make the kingdom of God our first priority in our lives. If he's not first, then you're shoving him back. And then you come and you want him to help you. If you're helping somebody and they're not participating in whatever you're helping them with and just letting you do it, do you want to keep on helping them? Most of us don't. I'm, I'm bad about that. Here's something that, um, you know, I'm going to say this first. I know I'm speaking all this word about putting everything to God and everything. You watch. He's going to hit me sometime this week. Maybe today. Maybe before we leave this church. I don't know. He's going to bring something up. Yeah. And then... Uh, He's going to try to cause me stress and worry. I've got to remember, hey, I'm ahead of you, devil. I'm already ahead of you. I prayed about this. God had me say this. You're behind. Go away. And I may not, it may not be easy to do. Depends on what it's going to be. But that's what I've got to do. And there's something else I won't bring out. The devil only has as much power over us as we let him have. He has no power if we don't want him to have. All you've got to do is call on the name of Jesus. Devil, go away. You ain't bother me today. I want to bring up one other little thing. I was told a little story about a rose yesterday, and I really like it. You know, we always want to do things in our time, our way. Well, if we take a rose uh, bud, I guess it's called, and we start peeling it open, what do we have? We've got a bunch of little rose petals. Kind of ugly, they smell good. They're, each individual petal is pretty. But if we let it unfold in God's time, We've got a beautiful flower. And that's that's what we've got to do. We've got to take everything in God's time and quit worrying about everything. Okay. <laughs> See, I told you. <laughs> but anyway, that we, we, we need to, we're adults in here. We need to try to learn how to handle our stress. We need to try to handle our worries. Yes, they're going to be there. Yes, they're going to hit us every day. But we've got to help. We've got to help me. And he will help us. 